All right, let's get started today. Uh, today's training is on InfoSparks. So we're going to be talking about InfoSparks. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about InfoSparks before we get going. Um, it is a tool that will allow you to create graphs and charts of housing trends. So graphs and charts about housing trends. And all of this data is directly pulled from the MLS. So we're looking at residential properties um, within InfoSparks and all of the data comes straight from the MLS. Um, so let's talk about where we would find uh, InfoSpark. So I'm just on the greatersouthernmls.com webpage. You would go to your MLS login, which would take you to your dashboard. And InfoSpark is right here on your dashboard. I'm going to show you a couple other places you could find it. If you were in the MLS, and you wanted to find InfoSparks, you could do so right here in the links tab. Um, and then if you scroll right on down to InfoSparks, um, you would be able to tap into InfoSparks and run all kind of statistical analysis and data. So those are the uh, places that you can access InfoSparks. I'm going to access it straight from the dashboard today. Um, once you click on InfoSparks, you are in the database. So basically, this is the database. Um, and now we will go through it. I'll walk you through it and explain um, how to utilize and use this tool. I'm going to turn off my video so we can focus on the screen. All right. So. First things first, whenever you log into InfoSparks, you do not have to create, you don't have to like put in any usernames or anything like that. You should be able to access it straight from the dashboard. Once you click on it, you should be logged in. One thing you do need to do is you do need to uh, set up your profile. So you need to set up your profile right here in the top right. I'm going to click on profile and uh, walk through some of the things you um, need to add in. First of all, you can add in uh, your headshot. This is great because when you share all of the statistics or when you print out the statistics, you want to make sure that it's branded. You want to make sure all of the data is branded. And so by adding in a photo, whenever any of the files that you share or anything that you print out, whenever anybody clicks on it, if it's a link, your uh, data will be branded, your image will be there. Okay. So moving a little bit further down, um, just to fill out your agent information, some of the fields uh, may automatically be populated. And if you utilize this tool right here, automatic from your MLS profile, this data is pulled directly from the MLS and the information that the board office has on you uh, from their perspective and everything that is within the MLS. So if you need to override any of this information, so for instance, this email address, this is the email address that I have on file with the board office and the association that I'm a member of. But if I want to use a different email address, all I have to do is click on this um, little button here. And then I can manually override any of that information. Okay, so I can manually go in here now and type in the email address that I would want my clients, customers to communicate with me from um, a business perspective, all right? So you can go in and make sure all of your information is in here. Then when you move further down to the bottom, you have some office information. Again, this is pulled straight from uh, the MLS data that is recorded for you. Uh, and if you need to override any of it, just simply check the box to do so. Once you have everything in, you would update your profile and now your profile is set. So simple and easy there, but that is step one, put in your profile information. All right, so now I'm gonna go to the top tabs here at the top and I am going uh, to click on InfoSparks and we will walk through just the basic information here and um, i'll show you how to utilize and run some statistics 
All right. So first of all, I want you to think of this top box here, if you will. So this whole little tab uh, here at the top. By default, the entire MLS, all of the information within the MLS is um, utilized and searched for. Uh, that is by default. I'm going to click down this little uh, down arrow and I want to point out that not only can you utilize and run statistics of data within the entire MLS, but you can also specify specific areas, cities, zip codes, parishes, school districts, states, and then you can even hone in agents, firms, and offices if you would like to run statistics on that and you can create your own areas. So if you farm specific areas, you can draw shapes on a map and create your own areas to run statistics on. So that is this first box here in the top left. By default, it pulls up entire MLS and you just click on the down arrow and you can specifically say, I want to run data in um, a specific city, a specific zip code, parish, et cetera, okay? So that is this first area here, this first tab. So you can compare statistics for up to four geographic regions. So this entire, this box here represents region one. If I utilize this add an area option, I can run statistics and compare them within a, with another area. And again, just hit another area, et cetera. Okay, so you can add up to four different uh, geographies, four different areas to compare that data with. And again, once you choose these additional areas, you would just utilize the little down arrow just like you did in the first one and choose the statistical data set that you would like to run. So the biggest tip that I can give you when utilizing InfoSparks is just what are you trying to get out of it? What statistics, what data are you trying to get out of InfoSparks? There is so much information that you can run and things that you can utilize. It's just ultimately, what is it that you're looking for? Um, another way to utilize this specific area that you wanted to search for, you can just begin typing within this area here. Oh, here. Uh, if it was on all, I was on, it was coded just for zip code. But once it is on all, you can just begin typing and the information will populate here as you type. All right, so let's go over um, some additional pieces here. So the next thing and this next section, after you determine what area you were wanting to run statistics in are, are four, uh, the next section here is your variables, all right? These are your different variables that you can search by. The first one here is property type. So what type of property are you wanting to run these statistics for? Again, this is all just residential data. So you can run this data for all property types, or maybe if you were just wanting to run data for single family residences, then you would choose that specific property type. Moving along here at the top, um, you have the ability to say, am I wanting to run statistics on attached or detached properties? Or again, run them all. In addition to that, you can specify what transaction side you would like to run this information on, all side, seller, buyer. Next is the number of bedrooms. So you can hone in on the number of bedrooms. For instance, if you wanted to run statistics in um, the zip code 70605, single family residences that are four bed or three bedroom, two bath, um, you could run specific st statistics on that property type. Um, and maybe you want to compare that to the zip code 70605, four or more bedrooms, four or more bathrooms. For instance, you can run that analysis. Just going to utilize this little arrow here on the right because there are additional variables that you can choose. Uh, you have the ability to choose different price ranges of those properties. In addition to that, you can specify square footage, lot size, pool, if a property has a pool or not, 
seller type. Maybe you were just looking for uh, traditional properties, or maybe you were interested in foreclosures or short sales. Those are all of your variables. So those are all the different variables that you can utilize here at the top. So again, easiest way to think about this is just what is the data set that you're trying to run? All right, so those are your variables. Now I'm gonna move uh, a little bit further down. We'll run some examples here in a minute. But now I wanna go down and just point out that this is the graph area that you're gonna pay attention to. Um, when you run your statistical analysis, it will be graphed here in this graph section. You will also notice that you can print the data that you create. You can share the data. You also have the ability to look at a line a graph or a bar graph. Then you can utilize and you can set a time frame. So the data here within InfoSparks goes back 18 years um, is the data set. So this program is contains 18 years worth of data and you can utilize that length of time that you chart. And then you also have the length of time for each data set and how you want to uh, look at the analysis and the trend sample sizes. So you can look at that data points on a monthly basis, or you can look at it on a rolling time period. So that's your graph area. And then down at the very bottom, uh, this is where you're going to see all of your metrics, all right? So these are all of the metrics you can run. By default, sales price is the default stat. So basically looking at what we have mapped out here, we're looking at the entire MLS. We're just looking at single family residences um, and sales price is what the default is. Um, so what we're looking at here is we're seeing just the market trends from 2019 because I have it set for three years. Um, so we're looking at those trends and what the median, because we're at median, what the median sales price is over that three-year period, All right? So that's what we're looking at. And then when we look at this statistical analysis, we see that that sales price, it's continued to rise. Actually, it's fallen just a tad bit from July to August with that median price being $242,000. So some of the other metrics uh, that you can look at, you can look at the number of new listings over a time period. You can look at active listings during that time period. Pending sales, closed sales, total closed sides, closed volume, days on market, and then you can break this down to median or average. So again, we're looking at a three-year period because that's what we have uh, mapped out here. And we can look at that analysis here with the days on market and how far it was so low at three days. And now we've beginning, we're beginning to come uh, with a little upswing. So before I go any further, you will notice that you see a lot of August 22 data here. So this data is one month it's just one month behind. So we're in the month of September. Um, and at the beginning of the each month, the data from the month prior is uploaded into InfoSparks. So at the end of September, at the beginning of October, uh, we will see September's data set uh, filter into InfoSparks. So all of the information we're looking at currently is month ending August of 2022. Um, so additionally, you can see month supply, price per square, percentage of last list price, percentage of original price, sales price, shows to pending, and shows per listing. Okay, so those are all of your metrics down at the bottom. All right, so let's go back up to the top and let's run some data. Um, and let's specifically think of something that we would like to look at. So we're going to look at all property types here. We will keep it all property classes. We'll leave all sides, all bedrooms, all bathrooms. We'll just keep it all um, as it is uh, just to get a good overview. And let's compare some specific areas. So let's look at the entire MLS, 
but then let's specifically add in um, a zip code. So I'll type in 70605 uh, and we will add that in. And let's add in another zip code 70611. So in our example today, uh, let's compare data sets for the entire MLS 70605 and 70611. So that's what we're going to look at in our example. Um, I'm going to keep all property types. I'll keep all of these variables just constant. Um, so we'll just get a good overview of them all. But if I specifically wanted to hone in on a specific property type or, or um, number of bedrooms or bathrooms or square footage, acreage size, I could have done that as well. All right. So now looking at our graph uh, here at the bottom, we have the entire MLS, which is in the darker blue. We have the 70605 zip code that is in uh, yellow. And then we have a lighter blue, which is 70611. All right. And so we're looking at can the same data sets for each zip code. Again, uh, we could print this, we could share this. Um, we can look at a line graph or we can look at a bar graph. Um, so here we're looking at the same three year time period and we are looking at, this is shows per listing, but let's go into sales price because that's generally the default. So let's just compare this just at a glance. So entire MLS, 223,000, 259,5, So that was 2020. Um, and then if we a glance over and look at 2022, we see a rise in those price points, all right? So this is median sales price. If I click on average sales price, it would give me the overall average of that versus the median, which would just be what's those price points directly in the middle, right? So this is one way uh, to look at this data. So we have three years. We could change this to one year if we wanted uh, to look at that. Again, you can go back and forth uh, between bar graphs and the line graphs. This is pretty interesting here. You just can look at different trends in the analysis. So we see overall 70605, the price points uh, are rising. The sales price is rising. Uh, the entire MLS looks like it's coming down, but look at us just in 70611 and then also 70605, we are definitely trending upward, even though the entire MLS is trending downward. Uh, the two zip codes that we're specifically looking at are trending upward. So you can change the time frame here. I'll point this out to you while I'm here. If you just hold your mouse over any of these little tabs, if you see the little pop-up health that pops up at the top, it tells you what that is. So this is change the length of your charted time, all right? So that will give you that example. The other thing we can change is just the data, and this we can determine the length of time for each data element to look at those sample sizes. So if you wanted to look at a monthly point, so if you wanted to, to track specifically on a monthly, as you can see, if I'm, I'm moving my mouse and I'm seeing monthly data trends, do you see that? So I'm looking at it just at an individual time point there uh, of the monthly information. I can look at a rolling three months. So that's a continuous and rolling uh, data set. And then you can do rolling six months, rolling 12 months, okay? So again, if you utilize this information here, each data point is three months worth of activity, uh, monthly where each data point is just one month of activity, okay? So that's how you would utilize uh, these fields here. Sometimes they can definitely get very busy. So if it is too busy, like if you were looking at this line graph and it's a little much, you can always translate that into a bar graph. All right, so let's look at some additional data here. So let's go into new listings. Um, we're looking at four, let's change this, but we'll change it to three years uh, just for what we're looking at. So now we're looking at a three-year data set and we're looking at monthly data points, okay? So we have our entire MLS here. When we look at the inventory, so this is new listings, and we can see uh, a big change, uh, a drastic drop off here. And then we see it's, it's still teetering uh, down here at the bottom. It's not quite, this again is August data, 
Um, but I would imagine we would begin to see this uh, maybe go upwards a little bit. Uh, so let's move to the next data set. We have active listings. So we can look at the active listings in the entire MLS. And here we have seen this begin to trend upward. And as you can see down here at the bottom, let's see, let's change this maybe to a bar graph and see if we can see uh, the numbers a little bit better based because we are looking at the entire MLS and we're also looking at specific zip code data sets. It might be easier to see on a bar graph versus the line graph because it does get so finely defined down there on the bottom because obviously there are not that many active listings, okay? So again, when we're comparing data sets and we're looking at zip codes, if we were going to meet with a client, we could explain to them the upward trend that we are beginning to see uh, more active listings on the market. Next, for instance, in this example set, we see pending sales. So we can see all of that information and that data. Then we see closed sales. So we can see the closed data uh, for those time periods total closed sites, then you see closed volume. So this is a dollar amount uh, in the closed volume uh, for each of these data sets. Again, if we utilize our mouse, we can move that over and hover over it and we can see overall, um, so basically what we're looking at here in the month of August, the entire MLS closed uh, 176 million. 70605 was 28 million and 70611 was 17 million. Days on market, this is always interesting. Entire MLS sits at 17 days, ending um, August 2022. Uh, 20, uh, 70605 is 22 and 70611 is 11. Again, days on market. Month supply, so month supply is great. This is gonna let us know or give us an idea of what type of market we are in. So basically what this says at, at the end of August of 2022, we had the entire MLS had three months worth of inventory, 70605 had almost four and 70611 had four. So what this means is that if no other properties uh, came to the market, if there were no new listings, then what we currently have would last us three, four months, basically. Let's say that, four months in 70605 and 70611. Price per square, uh, we can look at that and look at this. We're beginning to see that decrease in the price per square. Um, so if we look at this trend line, we're definitely seeing that the price per square has gone down. Uh, specifically, look at month end of July 2022 and look at 70611. The median price per square was $152. Now it's at 141 so we're, these are just trends. And you, I, I mean, if, if you're comfortable sharing this data with your client, if you were going to meet with a client today um, that wanted to list their property in 70605, um, you can let them know, look, the median price per square at the end of July was $143 per square in, in zip code 70605, and now it's 135. So you can begin to explain the difference in, um, and how the market's moving and those trends. Percentage of last list price. So this would be, if I listed a house today, let's say I listed it for $200,000, what am I getting that $200,000? Or is there uh, a difference in the price? Same kind of thing with original price. So this would be what it was originally listed at. So that first listing, like let's say it was 200, maybe I reduced the price to 198. So this is going to tell you based on original price, and this is going to be last list price. Then you've got some sales price data. You've got your shows to pending. So how many showings have to take place before we actually get uh, an offer and overall shows per listing. Okay. All right, so pretty cool, right? That you can look at all of this specific information, all of this data. Let's look at price per square here. Um, I'll go back to this and let's talk about how we can share uh, some of this information. 
So if we wanted to share some of this data, I'm going to take out the entire MLS and we'll, let's just specifically look at 70605, 70611. So these data sets, and I want to share this a couple ways. I can utilize the print option. So uh, I'm just going to hit print. And this is why we definitely need to set up our profile. So we can definitely see uh, the branded materials that we could print out. So we could print this uh, at this point. I'm going to switch this to um, a bar graph so we can see it maybe a little bit better. But I could print this data, close this, and let's go into a bar graph and see. If, okay, perfect. So this looks a little bit better. So we can look at it this way. We could also share this data. So we can print it or we can share it. So when we utilize the share button, we have a couple of options. So what do we want to share? Do we want to share static data? So static data is going, if we share this, if I share the static data to my Facebook right now, it's always going to look like this, all right? So if I pay, post this on my Facebook today at this time next month, it's still going to show the exact same data, all right? So it's just static. If I switch this to live data, Every time InfoSparks updates, wherever I shared this data, it is going to update as well. So if I shared this right now on Facebook, it is going to uh, be representative of August 2022 for the last three years. And on October 1st, when all of the new InfoSparks data is pushed in from the month of September, this graph is going to change and it's going to update itself to reflect September's data. So that is live data. I love that option because all of the InfoSparks um, data sets that I've shared on my Facebook page have been live data. So if somebody goes to my Facebook page and scrolls down and finds one of these graphs that I've uh, created, it will be current and it will represent August data even though I may have posted it back in June, it's going to reflect current data. Then you have the ability to say, how do you wanna share it? You can use a PDF, which you can print. You can put this on social media or within your email. You can even embed this into any blogs, websites, emails, or you can even share a CSV data. So like an Excel spreadsheet, so you can share that. So you would just simply choose how, uh, and what you would like to share, and then utilize the share option to do that. So that's how we can share that information. I'm gonna go back here to social media, and I'm going to utilize the share option, and you see that URL uh, pops up. So at this point, I could copy this and paste it into the data set, uh, or into the social media option that I would like. So it's just very simple and easy uh, to do it that way. That's how you utilize the data in a nutshell. It, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. The easiest tip I can give you is to what type of data um, are you looking for? What is it that you're looking for uh, to share specifically? All right, so next thing I want to go into is let's go into my areas. We're going to go into my areas next because this is where you can go in and you can utilize the drawing tools that you see here and you can draw shapes around areas that you specialize in. Uh, maybe those areas that uh, you farm and that you would like whoops, to share that data uh, on. Let's just go out of that. All right. So to do that, uh, we're going to zoom in or, or find the specific area that we would like to use. I'm going to go here to frequently used areas. So basically what this is showing is the frequently used areas that I look at and use would be Lake Charles Sulphur, Westlake, and Iowa. So you can see how those um, populate uh, there. And then also you saw that when I clicked on it, it brought me uh, straight to that area. So it brought me straight to Westlake. All right, so I'm just gonna zoom out here. Let me go into, I will draw a shape around Greywood so I can show you how uh, you can utilize this tool. 
uh, in this example, let's say we uh, farm the Greywood area, or maybe you specialize in the Greywood area and selling real estate in the Greywood area. You can go in and draw a shape around this specific area. So you, it's just like you would do in the MLS. You just grab your little drawing tool and you can draw a shape around this specific area. And from here, I can save it and I can name this specific area. So in this case, I would name it Greywood. I think I already have a Greywood, so I'm going to name this Greywood 2. Um, or I could replace an area that I've already created. So these are the other areas that I have within InfoSparks. So I have Barb Country Estates area, I have Greywood, and I have the university area. Um, I could create an area, or if I needed to replace that Greywood area, I could replace that. I'm just going to hit save and it tells me that this is a 1.4 square mile area and there are 850 listings in this one area that I drew a shape around. So now I can specifically run statistics for the Greywood area. So let me go back and show you how to do that. So if I wanted to run those statistics, again, uh, I can use this little down arrow and I go to my areas. And when I go to my areas, I can run data on that specific area. So now I'm looking at all property types and I'm not gonna specify any other variables here. We're just gonna leave uh, it as all sales um, within that Greywood area. Now I, again, the sales price is the default price. I'm looking at a line graph for three years. Each point is, let's do it as a monthly uh, data set. Um, so now I can look at the median sales price in Greywood for uh, this time period. Uh, so I'm going to notice uh, there must have been some really big sales uh, in the month of April and then also in the month of August for that median price point to jump so high. Obviously, we know there's a wide range of price points within that Greywood area. Uh, and so that's what we're looking at, or we can do average. Average will probably be a little bit better, but we still had two really big sales, it looks like, or some really big sales during that time period. But let's go into new listings. We can look at the new listings within the Greywood area during a given time. Uh, look at this in September of 2020. Uh, there were no new listings in the Greywood area. That was right after uh, the hurricane. But you can see uh, that data set and those points. This is also a great way, if you're farming and cultivating a specific area, this is a great way to determine if that specific area is a viable area uh, to cultivate and to look at. Active listings, you can see those active listings currently within Greywood. Pending sales within Greywood. Closed sales. Total closed side, so you can see that information there. Closed volume, days on market, all the things, all right? So that's how easy it would be to look at the data set for a specific area that you focus on. And that is how you can create your areas. All right, next section is your market view. Um, so when you utilize this market view, this is going to allow you to look at specific agents and specific offices. So you're able to look at volume um, in those specific areas. You can choose specific variables here, or you can just look at the entire MLS. And what you're looking at initially is you're looking at the top 100 agents is how this is broken out. Um, so top 100 agents, you see this also broken down into list side, sales side, and then total volume for at any given period of time. Again, you can utilize the volume in volume sales or percent of market share. You can look at agent reports, office reports, or firm reports. And you can look at year to date, the previous month, or a rolling 12 months. This is a great way to see where your volume trends with other agents if you were interested in maybe looking at that specific information. Uh, you're able to see that. So this is the top 100 agents. If you would like to highlight uh, an agent, all you have to do is just start typing in a name. So if I wanted to look for myself, 
I can just click on my name and I can see that I'm ranked 293 and there was no August activity uh, for me. Okay, so that's how easy it is uh, to look for that data. You just type in somewhat your name or anybody else's name that you would like to look at to highlight. It'll bring them up to the top. Let's look at a firm really quick. We can look at an office report. So I just changed it now to office members. Again, we're looking at just August uh, of 2022. So we're looking at total closed dollar volume uh, and non-members. Check this out, non-members. End of the month of August, were ranked the highest. And that definitely is on the sale side. Look at the sales volume for um, those homes that went for sale by owner, 96 units. That is crazy. So that uh, is where this reflection is. Then you can see those offices who also had their sales volume during that time as well. So you can see that as well. And this tab here at the top in the center is also a user's manual and FAQs. So you are able to look at, you know, if there's different things you would like to um, research and know how to do a little bit better. So here's like your my areas and how you can really draw around those shapes. And it just walks you through all of the different tools. This is like your help section uh, here under the user manual and FAQs. All right, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, I mean, I hope you were able to understand and utilize the examples that I did share. It's definitely, it's fun. If you like statistics, then jump in here. It's also great to really look at that and see a reflection of the market to see uh, the changes within the market. And especially, I thought it was interesting when looking at the end of August to where we're moving and how the market is changing. You can't break it, go in here and play in it, run some statistics for different things. All right, I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you soon. Bye now.